thought, what in today's... Oh, wait a minute. This weather is way too nice. What am I doing? <sighs> Let me fix that real fast. Oh, yeah. Let's get some coverage here. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. There it is. Ah, much better. All right, back to what I was saying. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very, very, very interesting approach. And it's a, what they call an ADF DME arc, or DME approach. There's no arc here. And what you're going to be doing is using an ADF to provide you with lateral guidance, while you're going to be using a DME to provide yourself with some uh, regular guidance as far as distance goes. Now, this particular approach, uh, for those who want to go ahead and give this one a try, is, uh, like I said, is absolutely positively wild. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, this is into a Haley, Idaho. This one's a Friedman Memorial. Sun, KS Sun, if you prefer. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go from Reaps, and we're going to proceed at an altitude of 8,800 feet directly onto this ADF, or I should say NDB here. This NDB has a frequency of 220. It's an identifier as Hotel Lima Echo. What we're going to do is we're going to go there, and we're going to take a gentle right turn, and we're basically going to acquire ourselves a heading of, as you can see right here, of about 335 degrees. And we're going to follow that away from the NDB until we get down to the ground. Now, what makes this so much fun is, like I said, it has a DME associated with it at a frequency of 108.8. So what we're actually going to do, if you want to look at this from the side, is we're going to come to that spot, pop over the DME, descend to 8,100 feet or no less, and then we're going to proceed along here until we get one nautical mile away from the DME. Once we've gotten one nautical mile away from the DME, we're going to proceed downwards. Now notice, this new distance we need to proceed downwards is five nautical miles. And you're probably saying, Wait, don't you get closer? No, the DME's over here. We're getting physically further away from it as we're trying to get to this point. So what we're going to do is once we cross over this particular marker here, we're going to start descending. Again, this is one mile away while tracking the NDB. We're going to go ahead and descend down to our minimums, which is going to be only circling. Circling is the only illegally allowed way to get in here. There's no direct approach. How dangerous is this? By the way, if you look at this, there's nothing but mountains. You literally don't have a missed approach here because you'll crash. The missed approach is turn before it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to 8,040 feet. So let's go ahead and pop back in the airplane and uh, get everything all squared away here. So first things first, uh, we want to make sure our ADF is tuned properly. Uh, we want a frequency of 220. If you're wondering where I got that number from, it's the one that says right here. 220 is uh, going to be the one that we're going to be interested in here. Uh, once we have that, of course, uh, we want to check to make sure the ADF is working. Uh, I wish it is. You can see it's pointing in the correct direction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and center this to an angle of 335 degrees, which means if I am approaching this properly, this needle should be pointing straight straight up. In this case, you can see I need to come to my left significantly in order to get that straight up. Obviously, this has to face straight up and this has to face straight up at the same time, which will probably not happen during this approach. By the way, notice our altitude is ridiculous right now. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up the DME. Now, they set the frequency as 108.8. If uh, you're wondering where I got that number from, it's uh, this number right here. This is the one we're going to be using for that particular purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to my DME and I'm just going to dial that run in 108.80. Now, normally you would see this thing up here or in here. Ah. There it is right there. So you can see I'm 12.9 nautical miles away. I'm approaching at 190 knots. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll be four minutes away. So let's begin. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause. And what we're going to do first is we're going to start making our way towards that NDB. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a nice gentle turn here. And we're basically going to start squaring ourselves up. All we're doing now is tracking the NDB at an altitude of 8,800. As you remember from our little document we saw earlier, we need to basically hold this until we get a little bit closer to the point where we can start our descent. So all I'm doing, again, is uh, flying an NDB and ADF here exactly the same way as you normally would do. Nothing sophisticated. Uh, this is the Piper Warrior, by the way, in case you were curious. Uh, the reason I chose this one today is because I have a very highly visible uh, ADF there. So you can actually see exactly what it's doing. All right, come swing this way just a little bit. The only thing I'm not thrilled with this aircraft is this does not... See how it's delayed? See how it's delayed? It doesn't do that in the real plane. Anyway, I'm just complaining. I'm complaining. I'm sorry. All right, so now we're approaching the DME itself. We're actually coming very close to the airport. If you take a look at my current heading, well, let me zoom in a little tiny bit here, you can see my current heading is slightly west of the desired 335. Again, this card does not matter, which means as we start to approach it, we have to kind of hang this way a little bit so we can swing to the right and actually get a little bit closer to it. So what I'm actually going to do, and this is going to seem a little insane here, but it actually makes a lot of sense, is I'm going to bring myself on a little bit further of a westerly course 
here. Now, the reason I'm coming further west is because what I'm trying to do is set it up so that when I get a little bit closer, I can basically line my aircraft up with the approach path down to the ground, which is, like I said, my goal here. So you'll notice the NDB right there. Um, I should say my ADF is pointing that I'm off by a few degrees. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. I want this to be off by a few degrees. As a matter of fact, I want it to be off by 15 degrees before I actually take my turn. And you can see that I'm slowly starting to hike in that direction as I'm starting to kind of make myself over here to the right. So I'm going to cheat just a teeny tiny bit here and I'll get a little bit of extra time because it will take us a little bit of time to kind of get us in position. Go ahead and speed up. You can see that little thing is a hiking pretty aggressively to the side here. I'll give it one more click. Really get us going. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Now we're cooking with gas. Got to come down a little bit. We're supposed to be 8,800 here. And it's looking a little bit closer. I'm just going to keep heading this direction. Again, I'm waiting for that to get more or less square so I can basically pull the aircraft right into a right turn. Nice and lined up with the runway itself. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. I think I'm feeling pretty confident facing basically the 330 there. All right, let's bring us in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn to go ahead and put the little needle for my ADF. Oh, that's going to be this guy right here on my left. So that it is facing right north. If my calculations are correct, which I have no doubt they'll be wrong, I should be facing at a 335 heading and my ADF needle should be more or less centered. Again, these are uh, back of the envelope, trying to do it as I feel kind of calculations. These are not necessarily high precision operations here. And you can see that my NDB is pointing slightly to the left and you can also see that I'm actually slightly to the right, which is good. That means I'm actually only slightly off course here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tracking the NDB directly. So I definitely need to come more to the west here. I uh, turned it way, way too soon. So what I'll do is I'll use that as a way to kind of line me up here. So again, I'm tracking a little bit more. The uh, NDB needle is at 12 o'clock. Straighten myself out. I'm going to speed up time a little bit. And we're just going to go right towards the NDB there. A little bit of weather today. Nothing extreme. To my left a little. Again, I'm just kind of flying the needle now. If you've uh, seen the video I did on how to fly the ADF, uh, you're probably pretty comfortable with this procedure already. Again, let's try to reacquire that, get me a little bit closer. You can see that needle is back at 12 o'clock. It's very difficult to do when you're traveling 700 miles an hour, but hey, I'm making the best of it. Getting a little closer, that needle's starting to get really sensitive, which means we're getting very, 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 very close. Yeah, see, it's starting to get real sensitive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring myself a little bit back more towards the right here. There we go, it looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna put that needle right at 12 o'clock. You can see that my heading and the needle are almost exactly in line with each other, which means I'm pretty much right on course for the runway. Remember, we wanna come on a 335 heading. You can see we're slightly pointing to the left of it, but my needle is more or less pointing at 12 o'clock here, which of course it was until I looked down to explain everything rather than you know concentrate on one of the hardest ADF approaches in the United States. The other thing we notice is our DME is coming down. We have a 3.4 nautical miles to cross that position. Now remember that 3.4 nautical miles is also a function of slant distance, not physical distance. Well, actually, well, slant distance is physical distance, but I think you know what I mean. Basically, that means that we have to calculate the fact that we're at an angle here. But anyway, I'm watching that needle going down. I'm watching the uh, ADF needles getting very, very, very sensitive. Right as we cross it, we'll go ahead and take a look at the next phase. Like I said, this is the approach phase. This is the, oh my God, we're doomed phase. And it is much easier to fly it when you're not distracted. <laughs> Trust me on that one just about there. I'm just paying attention very carefully here. I really got to get into focus mode rather than chitty chat mode, but oh well, these things happen. Yeah, you can see I'm still slightly to the east, and if you're asking how do I know, I know the fact that I'm pointing west and the needle is 12 o'clock, which means I'm slightly east of where I want to be. Again, ADFs are difficult to work with, but they're not too bad, and I get a feeling the needle is going to swing in just a second here. I got a feeling, I'm looking over at the DME, 1.7 nautical miles, we're getting close. Getting real close. Watch the ADF needle go boing and go flying on you. This is real fun to do in an airliner, by the way. Everything happens a lot faster. All right, 1.4 nautical miles. Any moment that needle's going to flip on us. Oh, boy, this is the fun part. 1.1 nautical miles. Oh, man, it, it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. I can feel it. 0.9 nautical miles. Any moment. Ready? It's getting real sensitive. Oh boy. So is the turbulence. Wait. Is it going to do it? There it goes. Oh, oh. See it twitch? See it twitch? There it goes. So if you look at this guy right here, so he's going boing, boing, boing. Oh boy. And pause. Cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the chart now and see if we can figure out what's going on. We'll grab it real fast. I'll pull it down so you all can see it all right. There we go. 
So now we have just crossed this position right here. This is at the Haley ADF. Uh, how do we know? Uh, the needle flip direction. So now we need to follow this ADF on a 335 heading all the way to the point where we get to that one nautical mile away from it. Then we have to descend to 8100. Then we have to smoothly descend from 8100 to 8040. So this means four nautical miles of distance to lose about 60 feet. So more or less we can descend to 8100 and then at the last second pop down. Again, do not go less than 8100 until the DME is passed. Popping down to the DME, you can see my current DME is 0.6. So no descending until we cross that 0.1. Then we'll start making our way down to that 8100. Then we're at five, we'll drop down to 8400. This is uh, one of those things that's uh, much, much easier said than it is done. All right, let's do it to it. So let me switch back to Microsoft Flight Simulator mode. I'll go ahead and crack my knuckles. Okay, so we're gonna unpause and down we go. All right, here we are. So now we're gonna descend to 8,100 feet and I'm gonna actually bring around and make my heading at a 335. Now here comes the fun part. 335, perfect. Whee! <laughs> at least I have a nice expensive DME in this thing. This would be a lot harder without a DME. All right, so now here's the important part. We have to fly the ADF away from the station. The way we do that is we basically look at the needle and when the needle starts shifting one way, we go the other way. That's the trick. Just remember when it's behind you, everything's reversed. Three, three, five. Descending, descending. Again, we can't go under 8,100 feet. Oh, see how I've just crossed the uh, 1.0 mark? I'm at 1.5 now, so I'm fine. So I'm at perfect altitude so far, perfect altitude so far. Coming down, wouldn't this be easier if we just did this with GPS? I gotta come to my left a little bit, it looks like. I'm just going by what the HSI says. The NDB is directly behind us right now. Needles are good. Whoop, entering the soup. I'm gonna come to the left just a little bit here. I'm watching my DME arc. I'm not sorry, I'm watching my DME. 2.4 nautical miles. Steady. Steady. Remember, 8,100 feet and then level off. We're not going to go less than that until we get a little bit closer to our destination. And it's 8,200 feet. The NDB has not moved. I should say the needle has not moved, which is good news. 3.1 nautical miles. We're in the soup now. <laughs> My whole body's stiffening up just a half a bit here. There's 8,100 feet, level off. Again, make sure your instrument flying skills are on par before you try this without an automatic pilot. Gotta come to the right a little bit. Remember, we're supposed to be on 335, not 33. NDB is still directly behind us. The DME is four nautical miles. Coming to my left a little bit. Oh man, this is like a, whew, I'm working for a living here. Looks good, you can see me with the controls, how they're wiggling all over the places. I'm uh, dancing with the wind a little bit here. Never dance with the wind. All right, 4.6 nautical miles. I feel like I'm descending downwards. Like I'm like getting like half vertigo here. Four point nine. 5.1, pause. Okay, so now let's go back to our chart. So we've crossed this position right here. This is the Mazdal. We can now descend down to our final altitude of 80, 40 feet and see if we see the runway. Now, as you can see here, there's no runway anywhere, which means our approach is basically gonna have to go missed. The reason we're gonna have to go missed is, again, we can't see it. These little dashed lines say, fly visual to the airport. We just crossed this waypoint here, which means since I can't see visual, we can't safely land this plane in our current conditions. So what we would have to do here is we'd have to actually go mist. Now going mist on this is super duper fun. What you do is you go up to 8,800 feet in a long left turn and you go right back to this NDB and you hold. But in our case, I would rather land the plane because you know I wanna see it. This is a lot of hard work. I wanna, wanna earn it, right? So we'll go ahead and take the bottom altitude and we'll go push it up. I'll put this up like way high. We'll go ahead and put this like this and we'll assume that we just broke through the clouds here. Now, according to the chart, we now fly visually. So I'm looking out the window and I can clearly see the end of the runway. I'm now ready to go ahead and pop this thing down to the ground. So our approach itself was successful. Now, they probably say, well, why doesn't this approach take you all the way down to the ground? I mean, we've worked really, really hard to get ourselves into this position here. Why don't we just go ahead, bloop, pop the sucker down on the ground and kind of be done with it sort of a thing. The reason we don't is because look around. There's nothing but mountains all around us. As a matter of fact, if you look, 
Our missed approach, if we couldn't find the runway, would involve us flying into the side of that you know, you know, cumulus granite right there, which would be the end of us. So that's why the approach itself is actually very, very minimum. It's just designed to kind of get you lined up at the end of the runway. So let's go ahead and cheat a little here. Whee! I have to enrich my mixture like something ferocious here. Now, if they were nice people, they would have put that end ADF a lot closer to the runway. That would have been nice. There we go. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a big handful of trim, and you can see we're basically on glide path. One thing I'm a little frustrated with this airplane is why do they insist on having the default viewpoint tipped down? I don't need it tipped down. I need it tipped where I can see it. Ah! Makes me crazy. All right. One, two, three, four. You don't need that many clips. This is a piper. You just do two clips of fobs. All right, we're going to put this thing down nice and gently on the end of the runway, and then we'll call it. So as you can see, uh, even though we had the complexity of the DME, at the end of the day, this is such a non-precision... Man, the wind's bad. It's such a non-precision approach that, in essence, even though we didn't have that capability, we were still able to get ourselves somewhat down to the ground. We would need a more precise approach than we had here in order to safely actually have landed, though, in that extremely thick cloud that you saw a little while ago. You know, at that point, you know, you're talking uh, time to go uh, redirect and fly to another airport. But remember, if you're flying on an instrument flight plan anyway, you're probably going to have some form of a backup. Woo, I haven't landed this plane in a while. Floaty, and we're down. Other than that, enjoy.